Good morning, Your Excellencies, Honorable Members, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Commissioner and Commissioner, thank you for this excellent speech you have given. Today, I stand before you at the start of a pivotal year for space, for Europe, and for ESA. 2025 calls for unity, ambition, and decisiveness. The challenges uh, we face are immense. But two are the opportunities. Shifts in global leadership require Europe to reclaim its voice on the world stage and uphold shared values. Europe has recognized the importance of this moment and already begun to act. The appointment of the first commissioner for defense and space, Andreas Kubilius, signals that space is key not only to Europe's economic growth, but also its strategic autonomy. The European Space Agency is doing its part. In 2021, I've introduced Agenda 2025 to address urgent needs like commercialization, safety, security, and stronger, stronger ESA EU cooperation. But times are changing, and we must do more and much faster. And Europe stands at the crossroads. But first, let me recall 2024, where ESA delivered a record of successes. Often I'm asked by journalists what we are doing in Europe, and I say ESA delivers. We have successfully launched Ariane 6 and Vega C. We have restored autonomous access to space. We have launched 13 satellites last year, six for the European Union, seven for ESA, providing information on Earth and the universe. All satellites perform perfectly. Our astronaut corp welcomed five new graduates and celebrated the return of two ESA astronauts from the ISS on the Hugin and Munin missions. We opened the lunar facility in Cologne together with the DLR, which is a world unique facility to simulate human and robotic missions to the moon. At the start of 2025, ESA proudly welcomed Slovenia, our 23rd member state. This also seems sees the first commercial Ariane 62 and Ariane 64 flights in this year, and over 10 new ESA missions are set to launch, including the groundbreaking Earth, Earth Explorer biomass mission and four Copernicus Sentinel missions. Human spaceflight remains central with Slavoj Joznanski, an ESA astronaut of Polish uh, nationality, embarking on his first mission on board Axiom 4. And our next ESA astronauts, Sophie Adenau from France and Raphael Yeshua from Belgium, are trained for their flights next year. The ACES Atomic Club, developed together with CNES, will join the Columbus module on the ISS and the European Service module number four, will be delivered from Bremen to Kennedy Space Center, enabling Artemis astronaut missions. As we look to the future, 25 is a year of building new capabilities. From the first light of the FlyEye telescope to enhance asteroid detection, to the opening of a high-performance computing facility at ESA ESRIN, innovation drives our efforts. Moonlight enters its design phase, paving the way for a lunar telecommunications network. And our work on the EU Galileo Satellite's navigation system will achieve significant milestones, as already mentioned by the Commissioner with the Galileo PRS and Galileo Emergency Warning Satellite Service becoming operational in 2025. With the first low Earth orbit positioning, navigation, and timing, LEO PNT, Demonstration, ESA is ensuring European leadership in this strategic domain. We support the EU Iris Square flagship program through critical design phases in 2025 and through, through new mission categories, optimized industrial policies, and an AI and quantum roadmap. ESA is shaping the future of space. 
Our new ESA Strategy 2040 is a blueprint for ESA's priorities towards 2040, ensuring Europe's leadership in space and its ability to deliver, to deliver solutions to key societal needs in a rapidly changing field. Proposing solutions is not enough. To achieve our potential, we need a significant funding increase, both at the ESA and EU levels. Today, Europe's share of global public funding is about 11% of the global total, and it is shrinking. The US investments, over 65 billion euros, accounts for 64% of the total global. Europe's share of global private investments is 16%, compared to 60% again in the United States. This is not just a, an investment in space, it is an investment in security, prosperity, and autonomy. It is an investment in the future. Fortunately, the road ahead provides opportunities, but we must take action. 2025 is the year of the ESA Ministerial Conference, the first step on the road to the, to the European Union's next multiannual financial framework and our next Ministerial Council in 28. Ladies and gentlemen, the future of Europe is at stake. Without significant funding increases at the ESA Ministerial in November, we risk losing expertise, companies, talents, autonomy, and innovation energy. Jobs will be lost and economic opportunities missed. Space is too important for our citizens and our countries to let this happen. But the ESA and EU funding milestones cannot happen in isolation. ESA and EU must work hand in hand, aligning resources and strategies ensures every euro invested delivers maximum value. We cannot afford duplications anymore. What we achieve together this year will set the tone for the years to come. I'm fully committed to enhance those synergies together with the European Commission and in particular, Commissioner Kobilius. But public funding is not enough. It is absolutely necessary and provides the framework for bold and attractive programs, but we need to attract funding from the private sector, such as venture capital companies, banks, angel investors, or private individuals. We see how successfully this works in the United States. In Europe, we made some progress through the ESA Investors Network, to which 67 funding partners so far have signed up. They provided last year about 1.1 billion private capital to space, which is more than 80% of the total of about 1.4 billion uh, private funding. But we must multiply this private investment, I would say, by a factor of 10. To leverage additional funding, Europe needs to help. Europe needs the help of the European Commission, of the EIB, and other funding institutions. The EU Cassini program is excellent, and I really appreciate the very good work done, but more is needed in the next MFF. The European Launcher Challenge could be a concrete case to demonstrate a coordinated funding strategy for the years to come. Europe, with its tradition in scientific excellence, must lead in space innovation. Flagship programs like Copernicus and Galileo have proven ESA and the EU's ability to deliver world-class space services. Now, with Iris Square, Europe demonstrates its commitment to resilient, secure infrastructures for our interconnected world. With our new commissioner, Europe expects a larger engagement in space for defense and defense for space, to use your own words, Commissioner Kobilius, which you used during your talks last week in Davos. Let me assure you that ESA has all the technical expertise, institutional framework, and program management ex experience through projects like Galileo PRS to work for the EU and the European Commission on defense-related projects. Already at the last ESA ministerial in 2022, some countries have provided funds from their Ministry of Defense, which can be accounted for 
against the 2% NATO thresholds. This opportunity might be used to a much larger extent at this year's ESA ministerial conference in November, responding to an increased need for space infrastructure in the defense domain across Europe. Involving ESA in defense activities is, of course, a decision of our member states and the Commission, but ESA is open to dialogue. I'm convinced, if mandated, that ESA can lift Europe also in the defense and security domain to become stronger and more autonomous. ESA's 50th anniversary marks a time for celebration, but also reflection. The space ecosystem is continuously evolving, and ESA has been transforming several times to remain attractive and relevant. ESA is a symbol of European collaboration with world-class expertise, cutting-edge infrastructure, and a history of success. ESA is the trusted partner Europe needs for the challenges of the 21st century. Commissioner Kobilius, ladies and gentlemen, Europe stands at the crossroads. The challenges we face, geopolitical tensions, economic uncertainty, and technological competition are daunting. But history has shown that when Europe sticks together, it can achieve the extraordinary. Unity requires effort, requires vision, and requires determination. If Europe is to succeed in space and on the global stage, we must act with urgency and purpose. We must increase investment, we must forge partnerships, and deliver this vision that will ele elevate Europe to new heights. ESA is ready. Together, we can turn today's challenges into tomorrow's, tomorrow's triumphs and secure a brighter, safer, and more prosperous future for all Europeans. Thank you so much.